And in a special feature tonight, Understanding Aquaculture, it is estimated that Kenya as a country consumes a slightly over 3,000 tons of fish annually, with the market potentially standing a chance to continue expanding over the years. To meet the demand, which is higher than supply from natural water bodies, commercial fish farming is being slowly embraced. But what exactly does aquaculture entail? Our reporter David Kagina spent time at a fish farm in Machakos County and filed the following report. At the heart of Machakos County is Kamuthanga fish farm, where on a concrete surface lies layers of black plastic sheets. We just pump water through them. So they are, they are hollow, uh, they create a very small, uh, um, a very thin layer of water as the water flows through it. And then it's black surface with this kind of depression uh, uh, on, a, on a flat platform facing direct sunlight. As the water goes through the, the, the panel, each of the panel it absorbs a lot of heat. So we create a zigzag motion uh, from panel A, the water goes down. Uh, from panel B, the water comes up. C, the water goes down. In that kind of movement, you are increasing the retention time of that water within the panel. So by the time they are through and going back to, the, the water is through and going back to the, to the fish, is warm enough for them to, to reproduce. From here, we head straight to the hatchery, where fish farming all begins. Here we cover our shoes to keep germs away and step into a foot bath to kill any that may have remained on the surface. Once inside the hatchery, we change to waterproof rubber aprons that are used by the farmers here to comfortably work with water without contaminating it or getting damp. The capacity production of our hatchery, we produce half a million fingerlings per month of, uh, of tilapia and uh, also for catfish also the same, same amount. The hatchery is basically where eggs are laid, fertilized and hatched. So these are our parent tanks where we have done a very careful selection to select the best parents. So we, we put them in the ratio of one is to three. For every one male, you have three females. So tilapia can reproduce in man-made system. Catfish cannot reproduce in man-made system. So as a fish farmer also, you need to know the species that you are keeping. Is it able, can you be able to get young ones uh, readily uh, from those species that you are, you are going to keep? After the eggs are fertilized by the male fish, the female fish puts them in its mouth. Tilapia, we call them mouth brooders. They keep or they incubate their eggs in their mouth. And the process in the nature, it can take even 21 days for the, for the, for the eggs to hatch and the young ones to be weaned enough to be allowed to to go out to the environment. So in this kind of system, for us, we don't allow them to, we don't allow the eggs to hatch because you have artificial incubators. But to facilitate this, all the eggs have to be collected from the fish. We collect eggs after every 10 days. So we come in here and then we corner all the fish. Cornering, I mean, we remove all the pots and the stones that holds the net down. And then we lift the nets and push all the fish to one end and uh, we separate that end and with this other end that doesn't have fish and then we check now we assume every fish is a female we check in the mouth and uh, if we get eggs we have bowls where we rinse the eggs and then we incubate the eggs after collecting the eggs they're put in an artificial incubators that simulate the mouth of the fish we need temperatures of 25 degrees and, and above 25 to 30 degrees that's one thing the other thing is the eggs must keep on rotating. You can, you can, you can see they are rotating. Yeah. So the eggs keep on rotating, rotating. By that, they are exposed to new nourishment. And uh, because when they, they, they stay on one end, they end up consuming all the resources there and they will end up to die because they don't have the ability to swim. So they will take five days, they will hatch. After hatching, we call them swim-ups. They will swim and play at this top part of the jump. As they are playing here, they will be carried by the current and dropped in the troughs. We call this the troughs. And inside the troughs you can see those that have already hatched with the, with the egg yolk with them. So here they stay two days. They completely feed on the egg yolk and now they are ready to, to start 
feeding. This is a unique farm in the sense that we are using a unique technology. Uh, the technology being a recirculation aquaculture system. It's a new technology in aquaculture and I would say it's the future of fish farming because it's a system which uses very little water uh, and you can use it, you can set it up anywhere as close to the market as possible. Here we have a pump. The pump pumps the water up on this top bar. The water gets into the jars, released at the bottom, and then uh, the same same amount flows out into the troughs, out again and then back to the, to, the, to the sedimentation tank. The recommended fish for commercial production is the male species for a number of reasons. So if you're, you're a commercial fish farmer and you want to keep tilapia, it is recommended you keep male fish only, simply because males grow very fast and very big. This may sound like good news, but it works against production. The number of fish per square meter is very important because it determines their growth. If you have an overcrowding system, your fish won't grow. It is recommended like now for, if you're going to keep your fish in ponds, you keep four fish per meter squared. If you're going to put your fish in cages, you keep 45 to 50 fish or to 60 fish per meter squared. So in order to keep male fish only, physical inspection of every fish is an option which is tiresome and can stress the fish, while on the other method is reversing the gender of the fish. It is possible for tilapia fish, uh, since it is scientifically proven that when tilapia fish is less than eight days old, the sex of the, of the fish is not determined. The fish is neither male nor female, because their, their sex determining hormone uh, is normally within their digestive tract in a sac, so when they're going to the eighth day, that's when the sac opens and the hormone gets into the, into the body and the fish converts. But when the fish is, uh, is less than uh, the, the, the seven days, the, sac is not, uh, the, the, the content of the sac uh, is not yet in the, in, released. And it can be testosterone, meaning the fish is meant to be male, or oestrogen, meaning the fish is meant to be female. So what uh, people do, they, take, they go and buy synthetic hormone, we call it 17 alpha methyl testosterone. Uh, you impreg impregnate that feed into the fish feed. By impregnation, I mean you attach the, feed, the, the, the hormone to the feed, and then you start feeding your fish from day five. So you're introducing a male hormone in their digestive tract from day five. And then that hormone now uh, 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 supersedes the, the female hormone if the fish is meant to be a female, and now the fish converts to be male. The result will be an outwardly male but genetically female fish, making reproduction a hectic process with the chance of more female fish. However, at Kamutanga farm, super males with the genetic composition of YY are used. It's only, there is only one farm in the world that have perfected this art of making the YY. Uh, it is in Netherlands, Tilaco International. So we get the, the males from them, we bring them here, so, and then we combine them with the normal females. Once the fish hit 5 grams, they're ready for sale to farmers. However, the rest are taken to the growing tanks for 4 months before they're ready for the market. Now in here are grow tanks. In the tanks are fish that are put in there when they are 50 grams. By the time they're coming out, they are 500 grams. But how so? Each tank here has 50,000 liters of water and can hold up to 6,000 fish. Meaning, by the time of harvesting, around 2.5 to 3 tons of fish are harvested from these tanks, eventually raising about 1.2 million after four months. John Eric is the project manager at Lattis Enterprise that has been partnering with fish farmers in the country. Currently, they have a fish academy in its final stages of setting up where those interested in commercial production will receive training. We realize that there's a big gap in terms of practical skills in the aquaculture value chain in East Africa and even in entire Africa. So that's when we saw the need to set up the aquaculture academy. So this academy will be launched in May, that is a few weeks from now. And our main target group is fish farmers, students, and, you know, prospective fish farmers, those who want to get into the craft. So 
it will launch in May and students will be able to register after the launch. So prior to that, we've organized the best farmers competition. So in this case, we've encouraged farmers who think that they have been doing best aquaculture practices in their farms to apply. From the growing tanks, fish are transferred to the purging tanks based on the demand of fish before supply. Now this is the purging tank. Fish are brought here to add value to their taste from the grow tanks. And now here they are denied food for seven days to add value of their taste. Reporting for Switch TV from Machakos County, I'm David Kagina. Wow, what a masterclass for our, uh, from our very own David Kagina. Thank you so much.